what's going on everybody it's Dante here with another video and let's get straight into things today over the course of LeBron's 15 year career we've seen a lot of good and we've seen the fair share of bad we had people praising him before he even played his first NBA game and we even had people questioning if he's going to be worth the hype as NBA fans, we see LeBron build his legacy in front of our eyes and try to chase the ghost that played in Chicago as he once said. In today's video, we're going to look at each of LeBron's finals and discuss how each have affected his legacy so far. Without further ado, let's take things back to 07, where things were more simple. A 22-year-old LeBron just got done with the Pistons in 6 games and was ready to make some noise in his first finals appearance. But the big dogs at San Antonio thought otherwise. Their defense and veterans presence was too much for the young Cavs team and they eventually got swept in four. But people didn't see this as a loss, they honestly seen it as an accomplishment. A player so young being able to carry a team like this to the finals was unbelievable to watch. We all knew LeBron was up next so we didn't give him that much trouble by his finals loss. He definitely could have played better in the series, only averaging 22 points on 30% from the field. But it was clear the legend of LeBron James started to grow. For all the people that know me, they know I'm a big LeBron fan, but even I can't defend him for his awful performances in the 2011 Finals against Dallas. This is where LeBron had rock bottom and so many narratives were thrown out there. He isn't clutch, he's afraid of the big moment, he had two other all-stars around him, so what's his excuse? There was no excuse. He played like total garbage, and there's no defending that. And how could we forget about his infamous 8 point game in Game 3? I don't think people give Dallas their credit for this win. I think people see it as more as LeBron choking and shrinking on the NBA's biggest stage. Dallas made countless adjustments and changed their game plan up to be able to frustrate and get in the head of LeBron. In 2011, LeBron's skill set was still a bit limited. He had yet to develop a reliable three-point jumper, nor did he have a post game to play efficiently in the half court. Which means their offense was basically limited to high pick and rolls. Dallas recognized this and played defense accordingly, essentially double and triple teaming LeBron at every chance they could get. And you already know Skip Bayless was on first take going crazy. And Dwayne Wade did hit the huge three with 4 minutes and 30 seconds left and handed a 4 point lead to LeBron James. This was his turn and his time to live up to being a back-to-back -back MVP and the most talented player this game has ever seen. And this time, he wasn't even La Robin James. He was La Alfred James. This was just pathetic. I mean, I mean, come on. I was rooting for I was rooting for Miami and I wanted another commercial where LeBron says, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there with a clutch gene oh. because he doesn't have any clutch gene. LeBron had some serious work to do the following season to change everyone's mind about him. Another year, another finals appearance. Yes, he had won his third MVP, but what was he going to do in the finals? Would it be a repeat of Dallas, or would he go out there and prove to us how great he really was? Was this a young Thunder team that broke through too soon? Would they be ready for the big moment? All these questions were answered in the five game series against Miami and OKC. Besides the matchup between LeBron and Durant, this finals wasn't really that exciting. Pretty underwhelming if you ask me. This would be the moment LeBron always wanted, winning his first championship with his best basketball friend D. Wade. The king had finally arrived. He added the missing piece to his trophy case and filled the hole in his legacy. He played brilliantly. He had no fourth quarter disappearances and even won the finals MVP. LeBron finally achieved his ultimate goal. And for the summer in 2012, he was on top of the world. As NBA fans, we knew this was a big moment for LeBron and we understood that, but we wanted more. We wanted to see what was next. We all know how this ended, but let's take a look at how it actually progressed. The first three games of this series, LeBron was off to a slow start, only averaging 16 a game. That's not entirely bad because we all know LeBron does more than just score the ball, but we were waiting for his breakout game. LeBron wasn't always at his best throughout the postseason and had some rough stretches during the finals, but he rose to the occasion when it mattered most. In Game 6, scoring 16 points in the fourth to spark an iconic heat comeback that we all remember to this day, and then his magnificent Game 7. In that crucial game, the Spurs kept up their strategy of giving him space to shoot the ball. Instead of hesitating, he knocked them down and made the defense regret playing off him so much, hitting 5 threes in an array of open mid-range looks. 
This championship is big for LeBron's legacy for the simple fact that if Ray Allen did make that shot, the Spurs would have won and LeBron's finals record would have been one win and three losses. But with this win, he elevated his all-time great status and joined elite company. While the LeBron and Jordan debate started to become more and more prevalent. As a LeBron James fan, it annoys me when his haters and more importantly Skip Bayless say Ray Allen saved his legacy. Simply put, LeBron proved everyone wrong in the fourth, scoring or assisting on 22 of the Heat's final 34 quarter points on an astounding 70% from the field after being so cold for the first three quarters. This also means that LeBron James was directly responsible for a huge 73% of the total points that the Heat put up in this quarter. Yes, Ray Allen hit the shot of all shots, but that didn't win the game. It only tied it. And we can't forget LeBron's defense on Tony Parker with 5 seconds to force an air ball and send the game into overtime. We're talking about a guy who left everything on the court and did everything in his power to get the Heat to win. If I would have told you in the 2014 NBA Finals, LeBron would have averages of 28 points and 8 rebounds, while shooting 57% from the field and 51% from deep, you would think the Heat would have won, but that was far from the case. It was honestly the beginning of the end for the Heat. It was clear Dwayne Wade's injuries were starting to take a toll on him and started to affect his production on the court. He had lost a step and lost his explosiveness and was starting to become a shell of himself. And Chris Spots just wasn't getting enough touches to really do anything. The fact that LeBron had to basically carry the team and they still got blown out 4 out of the 5 games should tell you how little help he was receiving. A big part of that is San Antonio playing their game, taking their time on plays, and making the extra pass to include everyone. The Spurs in the finals were so beautiful to watch. They showed everyone how the game is supposed to be played. The Spurs dismantling of the Heat may very well have been the most impressive basketball the NBA has seen in years, and it inspired teams across the NBA to try and create a similar style of play. The Heat were honestly outplayed and most importantly outcoached, and it wasn't even close. So the question is, why didn't LeBron dominate when things started to get ugly and when the Heat needed him to? I say because that is not his style, and as the primary ball handler and playmaker for the team, if he starts to dominate and take all the shots, who does that leave to make plays for everyone else? Mario Chalmers? Norris Cole? LeBron did all he could. LeBron tried to lead, but it was clear no one followed. I think this is the finals people tend to look over because LeBron already showed us he can be the best player on this championship team, plus the fact he wasn't receiving enough help. As far as LeBron's legacy goes, this finals loss didn't decrease his legacy. It would have definitely helped it though to be part of her three-peat. Not all losses are created equally. We learned that in 2015, when LeBron took the Warriors six games practically by himself, with Timothy Mozgov being the second best player on his team. Yeah, Timothy Mozgov being the second best player on his team. That should tell you something. Kevin Love got injured game four of the first round versus the Celtics when Kelly Olenek actually pulled his arm out of his socket. He will miss the remainder of the playoffs. And to make matters even worse, Kyrie Irving will miss the remainder of the finals after injuring his knee in the final minutes of overtime in game one. Tough break for LeBron. Making the finals for the fifth straight year in 2015 is reason to celebrate the Kings accomplishments, regardless of the outcome. I personally think if the Cavs would have had their full roster, they could have beaten the Warriors in the finals, but that's another story for another day. LeBron was superhuman in these finals. He became the first player in NBA history to lead both teams in points, assists, and rebounds for the entire series. He had averages of 35 points, 13 rebounds, and 8 assists. LeBron accounted for 38.3% of the Cavaliers' points in the finals, the second highest percentage of team points in finals history. LeBron turned it up to another level, but what else did we expect from the King? Honestly, the greatest accomplishment of LeBron's career. Being down 3 games to 1 to a team that won 73 games in the regular season and had the first unanimous MVP in history. With his back against the wall and everyone doubting him, he turned it up to another level we haven't seen before. His scoring numbers and rebound numbers might have been off from the 2015 finals, but his overall impact on the scene was greater. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. As soon as the Cavaliers won and the clock said 0, I actually shed a couple tears. I was just so happy for LeBron. LeBron and the Cavaliers did something no team has ever done in the 72 years the NBA has been around. Winning this series was likely the greatest accomplishment in LeBron's storied career. LeBron also for the first time in the history of the postseason led both teams in all five statistical categories for an entire playoff series. 
LeBron's stat line showed the following averages. 29.7 points, 11.3 rebounds, 8.9 assists, 2.6 steals, and 2.3 blocks. He was ostracized from his hometown after leaving for Miami, only to return and bring Cleveland its first professional sports title since 1964. He undoubtedly deserved the honor after cementing his place among the greatest basketball players of all time. If it was up to me, this championship would have counted as two, but it wasn't up to me. I set out a goal two years when I came back to bring a championship to the city. I gave everything that I had. You want to know what's crazy? The fact that when LeBron beat the Warriors in the 2016 finals, Draymond texts Kevin Durant immediately after to recruit him and bring him to the Bay. So we have a team that won 73 games the season before, and they just added the second best player in the league, who's a four-time scoring champion and a former league MVP himself. Not to mention they already have Steph Curry, who's a two-time MVP and the greatest shooter of all time. And let's not forget the defensive player of the year in Draymond Green and Klay Thompson, who was arguably the second best shooter ever. They did all that just to stop LeBron James? That's a testament to how great LeBron is. The Warriors destroyed traditional basketball. They distorted reality to overcome LeBron, and still he persisted. Yes, he lost in five games, but in those five games, he proved he was still the best player on the planet. For the third straight year, LeBron did something no one has ever done before. He became the first player in the finals to average a triple-double. Yes, the finals losses keep adding up, but are they really that bad? The fact that LeBron made it to the finals with this team is remarkable. During this postseason run, I had so much fun watching him. He proved he wasn't slowing down anytime soon, and he made us all realize that we were witnessing greatness. The Cavs got swept, and this is the second time in LeBron's career he got swept. And the fact that he's still considered the greatest of all time with two final sweeps on his resume lets us know how important these finals losses really are. You can make the argument that finals records are a meaningless stat because basketball is a team game and we know that LeBron has shown up in every finals except for 2011, which I think is his only blemish. It doesn't matter if you are 3-5, 3-6, or even 3-7. You need to get to the finals to have a chance to win. Jordan is 6-0 because every time he made it to the finals, he had an excellent team. He was fortunate that none of his star teammates got injured, and he wasn't facing any team close to the firepower that the Warriors have. LeBron is a unique player, and we have to learn to appreciate him before he leaves us. If you're still here, I just want to thank you, and I appreciate you. If you're new to the channel, leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and until next time.